Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for November 20th, 2021. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense. This week we're going to be talking about delivery scams and how to spot them and avoid them. As the holiday season is fast approaching, there's going to be many attempts to scam people out of money. And the biggest scams going on during the holiday season are what's known as delivery scams. What these scams are, are basically you get a message claiming that your package has been delayed and and then basically use scare tactics to try to get you to give up more information than you should or even money. So I'm Carl. Hi, this is Ahmad. And we're gonna begin right now. So have you ever heard about these delivery scams? Uh, very recently, yes. Yeah. Uh, and they're, you know, they're very simple, yet they they're very intricate at the same time. You yeah. Know, it's uh, it pretty much works on on uh, the human psyche, right? Mm -hmm. So what 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 they're hacking here is number one, they're using fear. Hey, you know, I have a package that I may not be getting, which is mine. Uh, and also they're using trickery. Right. Yeah. Um, and they're also working on the human curiosity. So it, it depends on, on really whichever scare tactic that whichever tactic that they use is they're mostly trying to, to hack you as a person. And yeah. that's the first step. That's the first key to get any gain any more information about you. Yeah, or even money, because with some of these scams, like I said, it, it will say that your package has been delayed because of a improper payment for shipping methods or some kind of customs or something got held up and with everything being so international now it's not unreasonable to say okay this package came from china and because of some clerical error or something you need to pay a customs fee in order to get your package to be released and then you're like oh no i ordered something for my significant other or my mother or brother or something and I want to make sure I get it for the holidays and I'm just going to have to pay for it but the problem is these are not real so what they're doing is like you said scaring you into thinking okay I ordered something and I want to make sure I get it so I just better make sure I pay for it but you're not paying the actual delivery company you're actually paying the attacker who is scaring you into into something um and there's also many ways that they can they can initiate yeah. that attack right it can be text message it can email. Be email it can be a phone call yeah right and, and and that's all they need to have on you yeah. one of those three pieces of information and a lot of people don't realize that even a phone call could be a scammer because how many times have you received a phone call from like a doctor's or someone like your bank or something and it was legitimate these attackers have learned how to mimic those kind of calls so that it seems kind of legitimate also because again they want your money or they want your information and they're very sneaky and very convincing because they've learned how to mimic the real thing very well so do you think there are ways to kind of protect yourself against these? <laughs> Excuse me. Well, number one is education, right? Yeah. So I won't, we won't get into, you know, protecting your personal information online. Uh, for example, your phone number, your, your email address, mm -hmm. which, which are the ways that people, you know, attackers can get a hold of you. Let's assume that information is out there, and because it is, and yeah. you know, even if you work hard on removing all that information, it's out there. Somebody has it. So number one is education, and if you know what that attack vector looks like, you know what that text message looks like, what that phone call sounds like, or what that email looks like, then you'll be better prepared. 
right? And yeah. there's there's many websites, uh, even the, uh, the FCC website has examples of, of those emails uh, that can be sent to you, uh, examples of those text messages that can be sent to you. And, and to be honest, when, when you look at those emails, they look very legitimate. Um, you know, mm -hmm. they, they use a, if it's UPS or the Postal Service or FedEx, um, they use the, the logos and the, the look of the website yeah. to, to kind of deceive you into thinking that you are communicating with, uh, with, those, with those companies. So that, that's number one, is, is learn that and, and know how to identify if that communication is legitimate or not. Yeah. If, if someone is asking you for money, know that that is 99.99% it's a scammer, right? Yep. But the most, to me, the most dangerous way of, um, of initiation vector is, hey, click here so that we to track your your package or click mm -hmm. here to input more information well there are ways where if you click here immediately there's a malware that's downloaded on your computer or um, even you put know. you to a site that looks like it's legitimate and then ask you for a username and password and then right and then get your yeah, username yeah, and password. But yeah what i'm saying yeah. is you don't even need to go that far I you know. know for them to you know so and and, and most of us i mean will go and input that information just because we fell victim to that scare tactic right yeah um, um what, what what else do you think can can we can do to prepare ourselves uh, i think the another good way is to learn how to go to these uh shipping companies websites directly and find all of their information like contact support or how to track a packaging using a tracking number so usually with these companies when they are legitimate they will give you both a button to press to track the number and also the tracking number in the email so that you can copy and paste it yourself if it doesn't have the tracking number in it most likely it's not legitimate because the legitimate shipping companies will always give you the option to either manually type in the tracking number or click a button for convenience so what I would say is learn how to go to their websites to um, put in the tracking number manually but even Google has a little trick where you can even put in track and then put in a tracking number and they will automatically send you to the legitimate uh, tracking company or the shipping company with the tracking number to track your package now when it comes to paying for bills and stuff I would go directly to the shipping website and see if you can contact them directly don't use any contact information that comes through the text message or the email or the phone call go directly to the website that of that uh, shipping company and find what the legitimate ways are to contact them usually they have uh, ways to either email or phone call someone to verify that the uh, message that you received was actually correct or not and they'll actually tell you how to log into or create a uh, account with that shipping company so that you can directly pay them if you do owe them any money um there's a there's another uh another thing i just read about which is the the one ring phone scam mm -hmm. where they'll just ring your phone once and then you'll call back yeah you know again out of curiosity mm -hmm. don't call back no <laughs> because if you suspect that it's a a shipping company or something you'd have their real number on your computer or on your phone never call back the number that calls you because that could be anyone I mean it's not necessarily going to go to the person that is legitimate it could be just a scammer like you said one ring like oh I missed a call from so-and-so they didn't leave a message what could it be about my philosophy is if they didn't leave a message, it's not important enough to them to contact them back. So it's like, oh, well, leave it at that. <laughs> because there's been a couple of times where 
I get a call, it rings once, and then they hang up, and I'm like, oh, well, not important enough for me to call back because they didn't leave a message to let me know what's going on. Um, what, one of the, uh, one of the things that you mentioned, uh, earlier was, you know, the international shipping mm -hmm. and yes, I've, I've seen this a lot where you'll order something from, you know, some, somewhere here in the United States and you can, you, you see that the website is here in the U S but then, you know, a few weeks later, you're getting a shipment from China. Yeah. You know, in Chinese postage, and and that kind of programmed us to accept, uh, you know, packages that are coming from from China, especially, yeah. uh, because of the money manufacturing that they have over there. Um, so it, I think it also desensitized us to the illegitimacy mm -hmm. of you know some of those other packages that or some of those threat actors that may be trying to attack from there. Yeah. How can we? protect ourselves from something like that, especially, you know, if you go to some of those websites after the fact, they're not even in, in, in English. In English you, know, yeah. you get some of those, yeah, you get some of those packages and you want to reach out for support. And usually the, 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 the initial, the original website is not there. Mm -hmm. um, and that gets, that gets a lot of people in trouble. Yeah. You know, especially, you know, clicking on links that you don't, you don't know what they say. Especially if you get like a Facebook pay, uh, Facebook ad for a product that is kind of enticing because it's a a product that you want, but at a reasonable price that you think, and it goes to a website that is kind of dodgy. Um, I think in these cases, just it's kind of tough because it's hard to tell between a startup company who is legitimate and like a big company like Amazon and something like that. So I'd hate to say, you know, just stay away from these smaller companies, but at the same time, you, you kind of have to, at the same, you know, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. It's like you can't really always trust these smaller companies but at the same time, you may not always want to support these big, large corporations. Right. So it's understandable. And a lot of these attackers take that into account, too, with these delivery scams, because they'll use these smaller companies as, like, say, oh, you bought something from this website over here, because all these data breaches that are happening, these smaller companies are being their, their databases are being taken over very easily because they can't afford the big security measures that these large corporations can so and a lot of times many of these smaller companies may not even know that their that their databases have been breached so we don't know about it because the company doesn't know about it so therefore the end user doesn't know that their data that their data has been exposed to hackers who are using these small companies to do these delivery scams because they'll go through the database okay these people ordered something on these dates so say, let's send them these uh emails saying that hey it's been held up gotta pay us this much or you have to give us more information or whatever the case may be so it's kind of hard with these smaller companies coming up. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, you'd probably be better off if you do deal with the smaller company, figure out how to contact them directly. It's like, don't, don't um, rely on the messages that are given to you. It's like, and if they don't have a way to contact them directly, then I would say, sorry, don't, don't purchase anything from them because I think it's more important to be able to confirm the information from these smaller companies than to take a risk and say, okay, I have no way to confirm if this email actually came from them and possibly get attacked or you know, nothing is worth risking your data. 
because um, your data is more precious to these attackers than anything else. They could sell it and make thousands upon thousands of dollars on just your name alone. And unfortunately, like I said, these large corporations aren't going to do anything to protect you. So you're going to have to protect yourself. Just be a little bit more cautious around the internet. And like I even, there isn't, there's a guide on uh, simplecyberdefense.com where we go over a way to create multiple different email aliases to try to protect your email exposure so that you can track, okay, this email is on this website. So if you get some spam email, you notice that that website has got compromised. And so then you'd be a little bit more on guard saying, okay, since that website got compromised and my data is leaking around so i have to be more cautious when i get emails from them saying that i have this uh, problem going on so then you know okay most likely it's an attacker because my again data got compromised um so with those little things that'd be the best way to kind of put a layer of protection on you so that you can cautiously know when something is legitimate and something's a scam. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now I'm going to take us on a tangent here since we're, okay. we're kind of like on the shopping, uh, online shopping and, and, and delivery scams. And, and this, is, I'm, I'm bringing this up now because I'm noticing it here in my local community. It's getting, very widely used now, used now, which is, I don't know if you heard of it, that app called Ra Rakuten. Rakuten? Uh, yeah. Never heard of it. I think that is called, where it's, um, you get, you shop through them. So somebody sends you a link. Okay. And when you sign up, they get $40, you get $40. And then we download that app. And then through that app, it's a cashback app. Through that app, mm -hmm. you purchase your products from any store. So whether it's, you know, Macy's, Target, uh, Sephora, you know, any, whether it's clothing, you know, um, uh, okay. makeup, you know, con yeah, yeah. video game consoles. I, I, I know what this stuff. is. Uh, it used to be called Ibotta or something like that. It's. No, I it used see, to be that, Ibotta, but then they got re, it was, it was sold to a different company and then they renamed it. Like okay. Rata, and then I remember talking to a coworker a couple of years back about this, and it's like, why would they rename it that instead of just keeping the name Ibotta because it was well known, and and this new name, the the Rata, just doesn't make any sense. Right. So I got asked a question because every time you buy something. You get some cash back. You literally get a mm -hmm. check from Rakuten, or you get it deposited yeah. into your account. And I was asked, why would they do that? And what are, what is their gain? Do you have an answer to that question? Yeah, it's easy. They're tracking what you are s buying and they're keeping that list and then they're selling it to the, to the companies so that they can say, okay, Ahmad has bought these product these lists of products in the past 30 days so let's target him with uh emails or some kind of uh incentives for new products that were coming out and or you may seem like mailers for coupons or something i don't know exactly how the data is being used but what they're doing is they're tracking down your uh, buying habits and selling that data to different companies so that they can do the market research. So that's basically how they're making money and they're just giving you a portion of what they're getting from selling your data. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So, so let's say I buy, five different products mm -hmm. from five different vendors. Now that list of the five products I bought is available to at least those five vendors. Or even just, more, depending or on- Or even more. Yeah. Depending okay. on if a list of companies say, okay, 
I want to get a list of all the people who bought from my competitors so that I could see why they bought for, to them versus me or maybe I could need to reduce my price a little bit or maybe I need to send out some coupons or something. It's, it's more of a marketing research on their end. I see. And it's cheaper for them just to buy the information than to run their own marketing research and, and tracking and, and tracking all that. On, yeah so that gives that the same if not better tracking abilities that is mm -hmm. built in your built in your browsers or websites or, phone to, or whatever to, to even smaller companies that may not even be may not even have an online presence exactly yep yeah, and that's what and that's what we always say. If if you're not paying for something, you are the product. The product, yep. Right. <laughs> Just like with Gmail and all the Google products, since you're not paying for them, your data, you are the product. Yep. Right. Right. And it, it, it's kind but of. But at least you know, me. like you said, you know, even though Google tracks you to to debt, mm -hmm. they still care about security, right? You don't, yeah. you don't care much about privacy, but no, you, you they care about security because about again, security. they want people to use their data or they want people to use their products and they don't want your data to fall into someone else's hands without them making money off of it. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why so they're it, very secure, but not very private. <laughs> so yeah. sometimes there is a little balancing between security and privacy. Unfortunately, right now, we can't have both, but maybe in the future through maybe some legislation, if the government ever, the U.S. government ever gets off their butts and actually do something about this problem, maybe we could have a balance between the two that would be an even compromise so that we could still protect ourselves online and still have the security without having to give up so much of our personal lives, basically. Right. And, you know, when when you're dealing with a company that has been bought and sold a couple of times and, you know, changed their name, I, I, I honestly don't think it's it's a good deal for me to, you know, yeah. get, you know, 20, even 20 to 30 percent each time. It's it's not it's not worth it. It's not because and it's not really that much, like, you know, five, yeah. 10 percent, four percent, three percent. And then you wonder how much money they're making off of your data. If exactly. they're giving you like only like what exactly. two or three dollars, they're probably making fifty dollars or something off of your data. So two, three dollars yeah. given to you is like basically chump change, basically. Right. Um and also when the companies change their names a lot, it's very it's harder to actually track which companies have data breaches and like can I trust this new this seemingly new company but it's not new it's just a rebrand and you can't always track what the previous name was because a lot of uh, sometimes some of these companies who have really bad reputation they just make it appear that they shut down but all they did was just shut down that name to rebrand into another name so it makes it look like oh this is a new company that came out but it it's not it's just the same tricks with a different coat of paint basically right cool yeah so the big takeaway for this is to just have a healthy dose of skepticism and trust but verify um, right so if you get a text message or an email or a phone call claiming to be from a delivery company the best thing to do is just to Verify it through the legitimate website of that carrier to make sure that the message that you did receive is actually accurate. And if you do fall for these scams, there are ways to report them through the FCC. Um, links will be in the description for many of these things so that you can either learn how to spot these things in more depth than we have time for or to even report anything that you suspect to be a scam but like i said the best thing to do is just to learn how to go to these websites these legitimate websites i know it may be a little bit of time but a little bit of time up front can save you a lot of frustration in the future 
And plus, it's not going to take you a whole lot of time to bookmark like FedEx, UPS, USPS, and DHL. Because those are usually the four major carriers for the U.S. If you're in the international, just find out what carriers that are popular in your uh, news or in your area. Um, and if you're not expecting a package at all, just ignore the message because it is going to be a scam because if you didn't order anything you're not going to have a package just magically appear in front of you because no company is going to take that loss easily they want their money and if you didn't buy it then they're not going to ship anything to you it's just that simple um, and with that said that'll be the end of this episode and if you have any suggestions on topics that you want us to cover you can go to simplecyberdefense.com and fill out our topic suggestion form, or you can email us at contact at simplecyberdefense.com. Okay, that ends this one, and we'll see you in the next one. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.